Good morning, everyone. It's great to be with you on another Monday morning. Uh, you know, we've been looking at the fifth key to victorious Christian living, which is profess the word. Um, you know, we talked about the fact that great Armenian cooks ground their skills in recipes and measurements before they have the freedom to, to cook with, uh, uh, you know, just the way that we see them doing it, just by doing whatever they think is right. They have to start by grounding themselves in the basic rules and concepts. Well, Nehemiah needed to do the same thing. He needed to ground the people in God's word, and he did that. He gave them the word, he taught them the word until they were weeping from what they saw coming from the word. Well, what happened next? In Nehemiah 8, 10 through 12, says this. Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to the Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be still, for this is a sacred day. Do not grieve. And then all the people went away to eat and drink, to send portions of the food, and to celebrate with great joy, because now they understood the words that had been made known to them. So, Nehemiah sees them weeping. He says, don't weep. Don't weep. Instead, rejoice. Yes, your sins are great, but your God is greater. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Isn't that beautiful? Um, you know, he's telling them that, that weeping is good, but it has to result in understanding what God has done for us. So have a great feast. Celebrate the greatness of God. At the same time, he says, remember to share with the poor and the needy. Remember to do something to show outwardly what it is that God has done with you inwardly. Our response to grace starts with weeping as well. It starts with recognizing our sin, but it ends in celebration and action to advance the mission of Christ in this world. You know, one thing, uh, I, it's, it's interesting. You know, the United States has more fresh quality food available to its people than any other country in the world. We have more fresh produce, more fresh meat, more everything. People come here and they're amazed. They look around and they're like, wow, look at these grocery stores. Look at everything you have. And yet, the average American diet is more unhealthy than that of other countries around the world, especially even the, the, the least affluent countries. Our meals are filled with fast food, fried foods, processed foods, canned foods, frozen foods. We have so much fresh, good, healthy food around us, and yet for the most part, we fill ourselves with junk. We throw out in the trash food that people in other countries would make whole meals out of. And in some ways, we take the scriptures for granted in the same way. You know, other people come to this country from places around the world and they say, we can't believe how many Bibles you have. We can't believe how many places you can go to hear God's word preached. We can't believe radio, television, podcasts, Bibles everywhere. You have the Bible all around you. And they think they're in heaven. They just devour it. And yet, it's all around us and it seems hard work for us just to open our Bibles just a, a little bit each day and read and spend some time with the Lord. It's amazing. We're inundated with it and we take it for granted. You know, we need to make God's word preeminent in our lives again. And that means we go to it with expectations. That means that, you know, they went to the Bible anticipating a life-changing experience from the Word. They said, when we go to the Bible, Nehemiah said, we're going to read the Bible to them. We're going to teach them the Bible. It's going to change their lives. They look forward to it as something relevant that would be alive for them. They listened to the Bible attentively to understand. They didn't just read it to get it done. They didn't just read it to say, I did it today. They, they didn't listen with dull ears. They were anxious for it to be meaningful to them. They were attentive to learn and grow. And they responded. They thought about the actions they would take to respond. Once they understood what the scripture said, they did something about it. So here's the thing. When you read your daily devotion, do you have a goal? Do you have a goal? Are you thinking about what is, gonna, what is this daily devotion going to accomplish 
in my life? What is my response going to be to this today? What will I do differently today as a result of the truth I just read? You know, my observation is that we usually read the Word to see what God will do for us. We read the Word to feel better, to feel like, oh, God promises this, God will do that, God tells me this is what's going to happen in my life. And I think we should really reverse that and ask ourselves, when we're reading God's Word, what is it telling me that I can do for Him? Or what is it telling me that I can let God do through me in order to accomplish His will? I think we have to be looking at both of those. Yes, God says he'll do a lot of things for us, but what are we thinking about that we can do for God? You know, we have so much access to God's word that we become, what's the word? I, you know, we become picky. <laughs> we, we become picky, you know, just the same way we're picky about our food, as if we go into a grocery store and we're saying, oh, you know, I like this, but I don't like that. I'm going to take a pound of that, but oh no, don't give me any of this. You know, we look at the scriptures and we say, like, well, oh, I like the New Testament, but I'm not crazy about the Old Testament. I'd rather stay in the New Testament. Oh, I prefer the Gospels, but you know what? The epistles kind of bore me, too much theology. Or, you know, the Psalms really speak to my heart emotionally, but, you know, the books of the law, they don't really excite me. So, you know, we go to the Bible as if we're picking and choosing what we're going to eat. We study our Bibles the same way we order our food. We say, well, I'll have a, a pre-processed serving of a gospel story with a deep fried side order of pithy commentary from a well-known pastor and wash it all down with a cute illustration. Oh, and oh, don't forget a quick quote from the Psalms for dessert. You know, we want it all fast and under $5, just like we want our McDonald's meals. We want to get in, do our devotional, whatever it is, get it done and get on with our day, and we expect God then to bless us. You know, you do not live a healthy physical life eating in this way. And we don't live victorious Christian lives by interacting with the Bible in this way either. So I would pray today that we would fill our lives with passion for his word. Go to his word expecting a life-changing experience that we may be challenged to great things for his kingdom and his glory. May you have an exciting time in God's word today. May God bless you and give you a wonderful day and a great week. God bless.